All right, I am recording um, notes. I'm just warning you ahead of time. I forgot my good pen, and so I am using I am using my um, not as good of pen. <laughs> so uh, this might be a little bit of um, a frustration for a little bit because my handwriting and stuff is going to be awful. So. Um, so we're doing quadratic functions, which this is standard form of a quadratic, um, ax squared plus bx plus c. And we're going to start using the zero property in order to solve quadratics. Just a reminder of what zero property is. That just means that anything multiplied by zero equals zero. So one of the factors of this particular quadratic has to be zero, and that's what we're going to use in order to solve. So let's start by um, looking at a quadratic. So let's say you are given 6x squared plus 7x minus 3, set equal to 0. All right, so if I'm going to solve this, I need to find the factors so I can set each factor equal to 0. So if you are an excellent factorer, then great. You factor however you want to factor. Um, I am going to factor by my favorite method if you um, want to learn it, then great. If not, don't worry about it. But I call this the bottoms up method. You'll see why in just a second. I multiply the first, the coefficient by the constant, and that gives me negative 18 because of the minus 3. And then I am going to rewrite my trinomial without the lead coefficient. So 6x squared plus 7x and I'm going to replace it with this minus 18. See, I used both of those, so I'm going to drop them off and replace them with the minus 18, just for a second. Now I'm going to come over here to the side, and I'm going to figure out all of my factors of negative 18 and what they sum to. So negative 18, let's see, it could be negative 18 and 1, that would be negative 17. It could be positive 18 and negative 1, that would be positive 17. It could be negative 2 and 9, that would be positive 7. It could be 2 and negative 9. That would be negative 7. Now, I could keep going, 3 and 6, etc., but the ones that I need are right here because I am looking for the factors that you combine to get the middle term. So I'm looking for the two that combine to give you 7x. So that would be these two because that gives me a positive 7. So that's how I can factor this as x minus 2, which is right here, and x positive 9, which would go right here. Now, you are not done. Can't be that easy. I have to remember the fact that I dropped off that lead coefficient, and I bring it back as a denominator. All right, so the denominator gets put underneath both of those factors. And then, if they can simplify, go ahead and simplify them. They both do. So the first one becomes x minus a third, and the second one is x plus 3 halves. Now here is why this particular method is called bottoms up method because now you take what you would if we weren't going to solve it take the bottom number and move it in front to be the coefficient. So 3x minus 1 would be one factor and 2x plus 3 would be the other. I'm not going to do that however because I'm actually solving this so I can just take this factor and set it equal to 0 x minus one-third equals zero. <laughs> I don't know. I got all sorts of craziness going on there. Let me erase that and make it look right. Okay. Whoa. Didn't mean to do all that. All right. So x minus one-third equals zero and x plus three-halves equals zero. And if I solve both of those, I get x equals a third and x equals negative three-halves. So that's using zero property. So don't worry, we're going to factor a bunch and, um, and solve a bunch. So let me give you one to try, and then um, I will turn off the recording, and I'll come back on the start of the next recording and um, give you the answer. So let's see. Let's try. I'll write it in red so you can see it over here. Try this one. 9x squared minus 12x equals negative 4. So try that one. Now don't forget, you've got to put it in standard form first. So put it in standard form and then go ahead and solve that. All right, I'm going to stop this recording and then I'll do another one.